Hey gang, Rodan here. Welcome on back to the Retrocade and welcome to another edition of Sports Saturday where we go back in time and play a classic sports game from the 3rd, 4th, 5th, and 6th generation. And for this week, to honor the NBA draft which occurred on Thursday, we are going to go all the way back to 1990, uh, really back to 1989 for you old-fashioned computer players. And we're going to play the original NBA basketball game for EA Sports. Now, when I say the original, I mean this is the one that started it all. And it's Lakers versus Celtics and the NBA playoffs. And what we're going to do is we're going to play a uh, five-minute quarters because if we play it longer than that, it's going to take at least an hour to play. And I wanted to show you this game because this for what we understand modern basketball franchise games to be is, for lack of a better term, Genesis. Because it came out on MS-DOS systems in 1989 in North America, but was not ported over to the Sega Genesis and only the Genesis or the Mega Drive if you lived outside the United States in 1991. So as you can see, we have eight, NBA teams that we can choose from, along with the All-Stars East and the All-Stars West. Now, this is a landmark title for a couple of really, really big reasons. One, this was the first game ever that was fully endorsed by the NBA, and it contained multiple NBA stars and teams in one game. Prior to this, you could have city names, but you could not have the official NBA designations for the teams. So if you remember back to when we played Double Dribble in the early part of this series, you could play as Chicago, you could play as Boston, you could play as LA, and you could play as New York. But the Chicago team wasn't the Bulls, Boston wasn't the Celtics, LA wasn't the Lakers, and New York wasn't the Knicks. Obviously the Knicks aren't in this version of the game, though they would indeed come later. This is also big because... Up until 1993, it was the f only franchise where if you wanted to play as the Chicago Bulls, and if you wanted to play as Michael Jordan, Michael Jordan was on your roster. After EA switched over from Team X versus Team Y in the NBA playoffs around 1993 and launched the NBA Live franchise, it was all about having trying to get Jordan to be on, uh, to give his license and image for the game, he wouldn't do it. So this is a rarity of sorts because you had uh, players like him in this. You also had Larry Bird, you had Magic Johnson, you had Michael Jordan, you had Patrick Ewing, who was on the All-Star team. And on the MS-DOS version, you had Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, who retired around this time, around 88-89. But then uh, he still kept his likeness for the DOS version only. As far as I know, he is not in this version of the game. So what we're going to do is we are over the next oh, about 25, 30 minutes is we're just going to play a straight up game and see just how different this is to what we know and appreciate about and often take for granted about NBA basketball games now. And the first thing I will tell you is the best way to really describe how this game works is stiff. <clears throat> and I don't mean that in a good way. Now, granted, you have all your players here and you can have substitution uh, players off your bench if you want. And you can do it for both teams. And the reason why I'm picking the Celtics versus the Lakers isn't just in regards to the namesake of the game but also because I am old enough to know, and I am old enough to be able to say this, that the Lakers versus the Celtics in the 1980s, still to this day, is the best basketball between two teams, and I use that word teams in its broadest definition, that I have ever seen. Now, I know that's going to open me up to people saying, well... You're just saying that because you're a Jordan hater or because whatever reason you want to pick from. That's not the case. 
Uh, I grew up and lived in through the entire Jordan era from start to finish from when he hit the big shot in 83 to help North Carolina win the national championship. It was 82 or 83 to his being drafted by the Bulls over the Blazers, which I talked about when we talked about um, NBA 2K 2008. And then all the way through to six championships and playing on the Wizards and everything that has come after. So, if you're going to ask me who is, I think, the greatest player of all time is, I can be very, very partial and say, well, it's my guy Larry Bird. <clears throat> but, statistically and in terms of overall global impact... You can't deny what Michael Jordan was. That said, before MJ, there was Larry and Magic. And Larry and Magic, whether you understand this or not, saved the NBA. Because they brought the NBA into the 80s at a time when it was in such a lull that NBA Finals games were shown on tape delay. No joke. You couldn't watch the games live. You had to stay up. Well past your bedtime. Oh, I cannot not believe I had Kevin McHale take a three-pointer. He's a power forward. He doesn't take those shots. He's oh, that's a charge. Now a couple things about this game. Uh, and I've already said it the first thing that springs to mind is stiff. And as you see how clunky these players move, there's no real sense of fluidity even going back to when we played double dribble for the NES that game moves a lot better kinetically but playing this on the Genesis is nice because you have three buttons to work with your B button passes your A button shoots and Larry how did you miss that layup that that's you would not do that and I've got the Lakers in the middle of a 10-4 run as Worthy tries the long two. And trying to be able to move up and down and pass defenders is really difficult. And the only way you can tell, and this is how rudimentary this game was. Oh, I hit the A button instead of the B button to pass. The only way you can tell who your particular player is is it's whoever is wearing the black shoes. So like right now, I've got Larry Bird, and he's got his black shoes on. I go to Reggie Lewis, he's got his black shoes on. Back to Bird, same thing. Which can be a bit of a problem when you are on defense and you're trying to guard somebody. Now your A button jumps if you want to attempt to block or try and get a rebound. And your B button can help you, or your C button rather, can help you steal. And you will know you will get a steal because you will. Whoop! I don't want to sit in mid court like that. That's not a good place to be. You will get the uh, organ that's going da -da 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 -da, and that will let you know you have a steal. Long three. I think that would be Byron who took that. Magic didn't have a great three-point shot. Read the buzzer. No. That's the end of the first period. So now if I wanted to, I could swap out guys on my bench for my starters. I'm not going to do that because in this game, they hadn't put things like fatigue in and whatnot. Or at least not yet. That was coming down the road. Oh, and Larry with a turnaround. Oh, man, Dominique would have loved that. Larry Bird was not a dunker. <laughs> let's, put it, let's put it mildly. Uh, he could, given his size, but... 
Was he as flashy as Neek or Jordan? Absolutely not. And Larry Bird would be the first person to admit, and I heard him do this in interviews more than once, saying, I'm physically gifted. I can't either run or jump. Oh, and Worthy got the rebound and put it back. So they're up. 21-14. We've got four minutes to go in the half. I can't believe the Chief missed that jumper. He doesn't normally miss from that close range. Well, everybody's missing. That's a good thing. But this game, when it came out, was extremely well received because to that point, again, we didn't have an official NBA sanctioned game. So it was a huge deal that all of a sudden, even though we only had eight teams to choose from and a couple of all-star teams, that now we could play as the actual Lakers and the actual Celtics. Or you could play as the Bulls if you wanted to. Or you could play as Charles Barkley with the Philadelphia 76ers. And at this point, even the fact that they had the, the Blazers on here was a big deal because they were in their ascendancy to make a at least a, a finals run in the early 90s. And then what would happen is that EA, with each progressing year, would change the title of this game. So like I said, it was Bulls or it's Lakers versus Celtics in this one, and then it would become uh, Bulls versus Lakers next year in, for 92. And then for 93, it was Bulls versus Blazers and the NBA playoffs. And then EA wised up and just said, you know what? Let's just make it a you know full-scale NBA title. And they changed it to NBA Live. And another charge. So take the three. No. But Larry will come back and put it away. But we still trail by eight. With a minute 16 to go. Now there is no turbo button in this game. You cannot run faster than your guys do. There's nothing you can do except just move down the floor and hope for the best. Foul. The foul is on McHale. So it'll be two at the line. Misses the first. And hits the second. So now it's a double digit lead, 32 21. So I gotta put together some buckets in a hurry. Except Larry and Co. can't buy one. Well, James Worthy from the corner is killing us. Go underneath McHale, put it in, and we get two more points. And that's the end of the half. So in the MS-DOS version, you could play as the Knicks. They swapped out the Knicks for the 76ers. And then on the All-Star teams, you were able to have some players who were resembling... Big time players at the time, like Akeem Olajuwon, Dominique Wilkins, Reggie Miller, uh, or I should be correct in that, Reggie Aloysius Miller Jr. the uh, third, and Chris Mullen. But this game was so well received when it came out that it was listed by Mega Magazine in their top Mega Drive Genesis games of all time. It ranked as number 24. 
Uh, Computer and Video Games Monthly scored it an 88%, although Computer Gaming World praised this game's graphics, but also said it was too easy to play for action gamers and scoring was too high for statistic-oriented players. Now, that was something that was going to be an issue and has been an issue ever since uh, they started really coming out with these sorts of games of trying to find that balance between... You know, the right amount of action for gamers who didn't care about the hardcore stats and they weren't stat nerds. And guys who wanted to be able to have that degree of uh, statistical depth. And didn't care so much if it meant the action wasn't as kinetic or as, you know, big as it could have been. But we still trail by 14. And the Larry bags a three. We needed that and then some. We're going to need a few more of those. But right now, I need guys who can score. And Larry, or excuse me, Mikhail with a sky hook. Kareem would have loved that. Actually, in hindsight, I don't know how much he would have loved it, per se. Considering it was his signature move. DJ for three? No. And I shouldn't have taken that shot, because taking threes wasn't really Dennis Johnson's strong suit, either. And Worthy comes flying in with a dunk. But you think about how far... You know, basketball games have come in the now 32 years since this game premiered on the Genesis. And it's so much different. And we saw, really, by the time you got to NBA Live 94, they changed the setup a bit and made it a bit more diagonal and made it, uh, you know, started adding more features to it. But EA had to start somewhere, and this is where they opted to start. And, I mean, oh, that's going to be a charge. For all intents and purposes, if they try to put a game like this out now, would it work? Absolutely not. But you could also make the argument that in some ways, EA has reverted back to stuff like this because in a lot of their franchise games, in order to push online play and microtransactions and all the things that make gamers really unhappy with EA at present... They've taken more out than they've kept in. And now we're just raining threes on each other. I need to get Reggie Lewis involved in this. See, and there's a steal right there. They don't happen very often, and they're not easy to pull off. Well, I say that as I pull off back-to-back -back steals. And the Chief throws it down. As they get underneath the... Oh, Robert, how'd you miss that? Long three. Bagged it. That had to be Byron. Byron Scott, for a guy who was kind of a role player on those Lakers teams, if he got warm from outside, man, he could just kill you with threes. And you have to keep in mind... That's another thing to keep in mind, is that this was not the era where it is like nowadays with Steph Curry and everybody raining threes and again don't get me wrong 
as a guy who was too short to play down low and didn't have the speed to do a whole lot on the outside, my bread and butter was learning how to shoot threes. And at the moment, we are being absolutely crushed by the Lakers. It is now a 20-point game going into the fourth quarter. So I'm pretty sure this will be a loss in the column. And according to my stat sheet, it is worthy throws it down. This will be my seventh loss in this series. So, I mean, I'm still well above 500. Oh, and another charge. Now, I don't know whether or not you can foul out in this game or not. Since they don't really keep track of in-game stats, that would come a couple years later. And another charge. But we may have somebody fell out of this game or not. We'll have to see. And again, trying to box out and control the boards is really hard in this game. The next year, they would trade out whoever your character is by having the black shoes by putting the star underneath them so it was a little bit easier to track who was doing what. And it's been that kind of a day if Mikhail misses a dunk from that close. Magic takes the three and bags it. Magic wasn't a three-point shooter. He hit one every once in a while, but... Magic was the distributor. He was the man who made the Showtime offense go. And as much as I could stand him in the way that an arch rival cannot really like the guys that are killing them, as we get another charge, as I was trying to pass, it's a respectful dislike is the, the easiest way to put it, as we are now continuing to just get shellacked here. Well, we've crossed the half century mark, so that's something, but we're still down by 26. With about two minutes to go. So this may end up being the biggest beatdown I've taken in this series. As Larry jams at home. So under 90 seconds to go here. Can we make it respectable? Well, we're trying. Can't say we're not. Can I bag another three? We can. Okay, we've cut the deficit to 18. I don't think we have enough time to come all the way back, though. Because now it's back to a 20-point game. But we're still raining. Now we're raining threes in. Take another three. But we're under 30 seconds to go here. Cut. 
Now we draw the charge one more time. So we'll take the two, and that is the ball game. So we lose 82 to 66. So that is indeed our now eighth loss in this series. But that, everybody, is Lakers versus Celtics and the NBA playoffs. I got to make sure I incorporate that. For the Sega Genesis slash Mega Drive from 1991. Is it a great game at this point? Has it aged well? No. It is extremely archaic. It is very basic. And I got to tell you, having played it for about a half an hour, my thumbs are actually, my left thumb from trying to move back and forth on the D-pad is actually a lot sore than I thought it would be. Uh, that may be because I was actually spent an hour and a half yesterday playing music and my hands are a little wrung out, but that may be entirely different. But, I want again, I wanted to play this so you could understand and see when you go and sit down and play NBA 2K23, either for EA or 2K Sports or whatever, this is where it all stems from. And you can go back to the 8-bit generation and the early 16-bit generations and see other game designers who came up with this. But when EA secured the deal with the NBA to have the officially licensed teams and the officially licensed players, it changed everything. And that is what set the course over the next 30 years to get us from this game to where we are now. So... I mean, if you want to go back and try it, by all means do so. I'm playing this on the Fusion 3.64 emulator. It's not hard to find. It's a free emulator, and there's the ability to find it online isn't difficult. So if you do a little bit of data mining, you can pull it up and give it a whirl. But if you've enjoyed this, and I do hope you have, best way you can show it is to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel if you are new, and ring the bell to be notified of the latest content. We also have Sucker Punch Sunday coming up tomorrow where we play a classic fighting or fighting platform-based game from the 3rd, 4th, 5th, and 6th generation. I uh, hope you did enjoy last week where we played Marvel Super Heroes. That was a lot of fun. I One of the things I enjoy most about doing these episodes, even though you know I understand not everybody's a sports fan, not everybody's a fighting game fan. Totally get it. But I like to be able to go back and play games I either haven't played in a while or potentially forgotten about or never played before. That's the whole point of why I'm doing this channel. And Marvel Super Heroes is one of those that fell right in the middle where I played it a ton in college when it came out. Didn't play it again for a really long time. And then having played it last week, I after I recorded, I probably spent another hour just bombing out on it. It's so much fun. I totally forgot about it. So... Uh, again, we will have that coming up tomorrow. Uh, spread the word about us and join us online on Instagram at Ronan's Retrocade. The sooner we can get to 100 subscribers, the faster we can unlock YouTube's customization algorithm and make the channel bigger and better. Thank you to everybody who has subscribed. I've seen the numbers take an uptick again in the last week or two. That makes me feel really, really gratified and optimistic that I am doing something right uh, in trying to put this channel together and get it on the map. Uh, I do have our final decision for our next playthrough. Uh, that will be coming next week. I have to find time in the middle of it uh, between my work schedule to start recording those episodes. Uh, the only spoiler I will give you is it's a PS1 title, but not a PS1 title that you may think. So uh, take of that as you will. And as always... If there is a game you would like to see as feature from the Nintendo Entertainment System, the Super Nintendo, Sega Master System, Sega Genesis, or Mega Drive, SNK Neo Geo, Nintendo 64, PlayStation 1, or PlayStation 2, leave it in the comments below or drop me a line on Instagram. It can be any game from those consoles that you want. And as always, my name is Ronan. It's been great to spend the Sports Saturday with you. Be safe, be well, happy gaming, and we will talk to you tomorrow for Sucker Punch Sunday. Bye.